All right, welcome to the pond. Um, this is new for me. Not sure how it's going to go, but I'll do my best. Should be pretty simple. Um, today we're going to talk about building blocks in Microsoft Word. So you may be sitting there scratching your head saying, hmm, what exactly are building blocks? Well, building blocks in Word are kind of like building blocks that uh, a kid plays with. They're pieces, parts that, that you put together to build or create larger components or larger items. It's yeah, individual components. That's a good, good terminology. Individual components used to put together and make larger items. Okay. Um, you may already know what building blocks are. You just don't realize it. Let me switch over to Word so you can see part of what's happening here anyway. So if you've ever gone into Microsoft Word, and let's say maybe you've inserted a page number or a header or a footer. If you go to the Insert tab and you click on Header, any of this look familiar? If it does, then you've worked with building blocks before. These are all building blocks. We have headers. We have footers. We have page numbers. Oodles and oodles of different page numbers. Top page, bottom of page, page margins, current position. And these are all individual building blocks. Um, but it doesn't, it doesn't stop there. If I come over here to the far left side of the Insert tab, you'll see we have a Cover Page button. If you've ever used a Cover Page, these are all building blocks. So there's kind of a giveaway when you look at these things. Like if I bring back up the headers, when I look at this, if I look down here at the bottom of this selection, whoa. Where'd you go? There we go. Headers. And I go to the bottom of this selection. You see this option at the very bottom that right now is grayed out. Save selection to header gallery. Okay, within building blocks, there are different galleries. There's a header gallery. There's a footer gallery. There's a cover page gallery. There's a page number gallery. Okay. So if you see this at the bottom of any of these menus, then that tells you that it's a building block. To go just a little bit farther, if I go to the Design tab up on the ribbon and go almost all the way to the right, you'll see a watermark button. If I click on that watermark button, oh look, down here at the bottom, you'll see Save Selection to Watermark Gallery. So there's another gallery. A gallery full of watermarks that you can use, building blocks that you can use to create complete documents. Okay. Um, one more that we have that I don't think is used quite as often as maybe some of these other ones is our table of content gallery. Okay. See, save selection to table of contents gallery. These are building blocks. There's only three of them for. For right now, there you can get more online, but for the, the basic part of this, there are three. Oh, and let's not forget back on the Insert tab, I'm sure most of you have worked with tables before. And how do we do that? Well, we click on the Table button, we come down here, and we highlight the number of squares that we want in our table. But if you take a minute to look a little bit lower down here in the bottom, you'll see Quick Tables. And when I hover over Quick Tables, You'll see over here to the to the right, we have some built-in calendars. There's calendar one, calendar two, calendar three, confusing calendar four. I tried to mess with this one the other day, and holy cannolis, Batman. I was kind of lost. Um, but these are merely templates. So if I click this, this option here for calendar two, you'll see it says May. When it inserts that on my Word document, it's May. So if I want this to reflect the current month or 
a future month, then I simply make the changes that I need to make to this template, okay? I look at my calendar and I see March starts on a Monday. So I'll put one, tab two, tab three, tab four, tab five, tab six, tab seven. You get the idea. So you, you recreate these um, using the template from the quick parts. So let me undo all of this. Get rid of that. Um, so there, I mean, using quick parts is really quite simple. Uh, there are even a few predefined tables. If I hover over quick tables, come down here. Here's some predefined tables. It's it's preformatted, not so much predefined, but preformatted. If I select this matrix format then it'll insert that matrix format onto my document. I make whatever changes I need to make. Okay, and then I press on with the rest of my document. So yeah, it looks like a bit of work to make these changes in the table, but it does save you the time of inserting the individual cells and then trying to format it the way you want it to look. If this is a look that you like, then you can use this over and over and over again. Hence the term building blocks, okay? So let's dig in and find out how to create these building blocks. And for that, I'm going to just take me completely out of the picture so y'all can see everything that's happening for when I zoom in and zoom out. So I'm gonna start with a header. Um, well, not a header. I'm gonna. I want to make a title. You've all, at least if you work at CTC, you've seen our policy letters. Our policy letters have a title at the top of the policy, but it's not a header. It doesn't show up on every page of the policy. Okay, that's what a header does. Uh, if you're not familiar with headers and footers, if I come in here and I insert, and I'll just throw one in here. If I insert a header, and then if I add a second or a third page, you'll see how it adds that header to every page. That's what makes a header a header. I don't want a header, I want a title. So I'm gonna create a title, very simple title. I'm gonna insert a two cell table, just like that. Um, I'm gonna center a line using the keyboard shortcut Control E. And then I'll just type my, my text. I'll put Central Texas College, Human Resource Management, Training and Technology. Um, policies and procedures, okay? Just simple stuff. And then I'll come down to the bottom one and I'll center that one and I'll put policy number and I'll put some pound signs in there so that I know to change that when I, when I insert this into my new documents. I'm gonna select all of this and I'm gonna make just a, a few formatting changes. I'll go back to the home tab, to the paragraph dialog launcher, and I'll add six spaces before and six spaces after. That's six spaces before every paragraph and six spaces after every paragraph. And that just gives me some space around here. And then if I want, I can come in here and I can modify those borders. I'll change my borders to a double line border. Now I have double line border, all party. Okay, so that's this is the hardest part about building blocks is creating the initial chunk. Okay, the the initial block that you're going to use. So now I'm going to come in. I'm going to select that table. All right, I'm going to select both both cells in the table. Now I go to the insert tab and since 
since I want this to just insert into my document, I'm going to go to the Quick Parts button. And when I click on the Quick Parts button, you'll see the option right here. It's not grayed out anymore because I have something selected that I want to add to my Quick Part Gallery. So I click on Save Selection to Quick Part Gallery. I'm going to give it a name. I'll name it Policy Title. I'm going to leave it in the Quick Part Gallery, but you can see these are all the different galleries. Um, many of them I spoke about, right? Uh, the cover page, the footers, the headers, page numbers. There are multiple page number galleries. There's the Quick Part Gallery, Table of Content Gallery, Table Gallery, just oodles and oodles. And there's room for custom. And I'm going to show you how we're going to create our own. Um, well, no, we're not going to create new galleries. I'll, I'll not do that. But what I am going to do is create a new category. Because when I look at these parts in the galleries, they're going to be listed by category. Um, I believe the first category in most of these are built in. So I want, I want mine to all come before all of the built in category. So from create new building block dialog box in the category section, I'll select create new category. I'm going to name it. I'm going to start my name with an underscore and then my quick parts. I put the underscore in front of it because computer wise, the underscore comes before every letter of the alphabet. All right. So it should put this category at the top. Now you're not going to notice it so much with the quick parts because the quick parts are your parts that you add. So when we open quick parts after this, this will be the only one in there. So I'll click OK. You can add a description. Insert policy title. And we're just going to leave the save in and the options at the default settings. Click OK. And as since this is this is selected, I'll just get rid of it. I'll cut it out. And now, if I need to uh, create a new policy letter or or update a policy or whatever, and I need to reinsert that heading, I just come up to Quick Parts and look right there on the very top under My Quick Parts is my policy title. Click to insert it, and there it is. So yeah, it took me what three or four minutes to insert to create the thing. But now when I need to insert it into a new document, it takes me a second. OK, you go to the insert tab, quick parts, boom, there it is. And you can use it over and over and over again. It doesn't go away unless you physically delete that object okay, or that block. So that's that's the basics of how building blocks work. You figure out what it is that you want to use. What what pieces, parts do you need that you can create to save you that time? Um, maybe it's it's just you know the uh, a disclaimer. Um, I'll just throw some random text in here to simulate a disclaimer. Oops, R A N D. Okay, there's some, some, some text. Maybe this is my disclaimer. I just select this text, go to Quick Parts, save selection to Quick Parts Gallery, call it Disclaimer, add it to My Quick Parts, click OK, and then if I need to insert that disclaimer somewhere, there it is. Okay. Put it in again, there it is. It, it's real easy to use. Quick Parts, real easy to use. Um, how about a footer? Let's take a look at a footer because our policies, our policies don't have headers per se. They have a title on it, but they do have a footer. So let's take a look at how to create a custom footer turn it into a building block so that we can use it over and over and over again whenever we need it. I'll go ahead and double click in the footer area. That's the easiest way to get into the header and footer area is to simply bring your mouse down into the, the footer area. 
and that's as designated by this gray area on the right hand, or I'm sorry, the left hand ruler, and then you double click. You could do it in the header too if you want to do, it doesn't matter. And then we're gonna create our, our footer. So I'll just put here, um, training and technology policy, number, number, number. And then I also want to put, I want to put a date in here. Now you'll notice that when you go into the footer many times, if not every time, kind of hard to tell with the word, it can be a little finicky sometimes. But as soon as I went into the footer, it added two tabs to my ruler. There's a center align tab. And then this is a right align tab. You see that little backwards L there? That's a right align tab on the right margin. So if I come down to the bottom, and from where I'm sitting now, my flashing insertion line is at the end of my text. If I press tab, I'm now sitting on that center align tab. So if I type something, it's center aligned on the page. I don't want to put anything here. I want to go over to the right side. So I press tab again. And here I'm just going to put the month and the year that this policy was either created or updated. February 2021. And then to create my header and footer, for my, to create my footer, I select that text. And then I go to the insert tab on the ribbon. And this is a footer, okay? So I'm going to click on the footer button. At the bottom of the footer menu, there is the save selection to footer gallery. Click that. I'll call this policy footer. I'll leave it in the footer gallery. I'm going to create my new footer um, category. Again, I'm going to underscore my footers. Click OK. Click OK again. So there's my footer. Now I'll just open a new document just to show you how this works so you don't think I have something up my sleeve. Um, and I'm simply going to go to the insert tab, footer, and there is my footer category. There's my policy footer. Click, and there it is. It even puts it in the footer for me. I don't have to go down and double click into the footer. So that's where the importance of putting them in the correct gallery comes in. You add footers to the footer gallery. You add headers to the header gallery. You add um, cover pages to the cover page gallery. We're going to take a look at creating uh, watermarks here in just a little while. We're going to add that to the watermark gallery. So by doing that, it puts these building blocks in the correct places. All right. That takes me then to uh, a little more, a little more intricate footer. Let's take a look at something a little more intricate. I'm going to close my header and footer on this one. And well, let me just let me just open a new document. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some random text to this. I'm going to add more random text. It's about nine pages worth. So let me zoom in. So we're looking at a page at a time here. Okay, I got about about nine pages. Um, as I can tell, looking down here in the bottom left corner, page four of nine. Okay, so it doesn't really matter what page I'm on at this point in the game. What I want to do is I want to create. Let's let's say these are my standard operating procedures for the office. I want to add a footer to these pages. So I double click in the footer. Uh, I'm going to make this bold. So I'll do a control B to make bold and I'll put standard operating 
procedures. And I'm a tab. There's my center align tab. I'm going to go one past that. So tab again. And this time we're going to throw a little bit of extra magic in there because this document's going to be broken down by sections and by pages. So here I'll put section and then a space. Um, so what, what are sections? Well, I'll show you what sections are in here in just a minute if you've never worked with sections. Um, so to add the field or so that it automatically picks up the section, I'm going to go back to the insert tab on the ribbon. I'm going to go to quick parts and then I'm going to select field. So these are all fields on or in Microsoft Word that, well, when you have time, you can go out and explore what all these different fields do. But I'm going to go down, I'm going to select the, uh, the section field. I don't need to make any changes over here as far as field properties or anything go. I'm just going to click on OK. And you'll see it puts section one in there because this is section one of my document. And look, all my pages say section one. So now what I want to do is I want to add the page number. So I'll do something all a space slash space or whatever you want to use to separate them. And then I'll type page. And now I'm going to come up and I'm going to insert a page number at the current position. Or if I want to do it quicker, I can use the control shift or control shift alt. Let me get that right. Shift alt P. Oops, not when you're there, when you're here. Shift Alt P and it adds the page number. I want to make that bold. So I'll select it, do a control B. Okay. So let me show you that again, just, just because to add the page number, the keyboard shortcut is Shift Alt P. You hold down the Shift, the Alt, and then the P at the same time. Um, you don't have to try and time them all so they go at the same time you just hold down the shift then the alt and then the p so that they're all held down at the same time again i'll make that bold so this is page five section one this is page six section one page seven so on and so forth till we get to the end page nine now i want to add section two to my document so to add a new section here on the layout tab you select breaks and this is for a new document okay if you have a, a document that's already created it works a little different I don't want to get into all the differences today give me a call if you have questions about sections um, but I'm gonna, from the breaks button I'm going to select next page so you'll see it inserts a new page and if I scroll to the bottom of that page look section two so my page number's off okay yeah we'll fix that here in just a minute so let me add some text i'm going to add some latin so that you know the two sections look different okay so there's there's my my second section but again the page number is off so what i have to do is go back to the end of section one go to the first page of section two. I'm going to double click in the footer to jump in there. And then I'm going to select the page number. Now there's two ways to get in and make this change. You can either um, go up here to the page number button and format page numbers, or you could right click on the page number and format page numbers from here. Two different ways get you into the same thing. No big deal. And you'll see it says that it is um, set to continue from previous section. That's not what we want. We want it to start new page number at the new section. So you click the radio button beside start at. Page one is the default. Click OK. Now I have page or, uh, section one, page nine here, section two, page one here, 
And as I scroll down, you'll see there's section two, page two, section two, page three, so on and so on until we get to the end. If I wanna add another section, same thing. Go to the layout tab, breaks, next page, there's section three, okay? And it picked up that you don't wanna continue this section. So now we have section three, page one. So if I add um, my text in here, You'll see section three, page four, page five. You don't have to go in and reset that page every time. Check it every time because it doesn't always pick up on what you want to do. But for the most part, it does a pretty good job um, of picking up on what it is you want to do. All right. Um, let's see. Building blocks are good, right? I've just shown you how uh, creating a building block um, can save you some time. There is one downfall to building blocks, and that's the fact that you can't just go in and make a change to a building block contents. Uh, you can go in and you can change the name, you can change the gallery it's in, you can change uh, the category that it's under. <laughs> but you cannot go in and just make a change to the contents. Uh, the way you get in and, and look at changes, as well as look at all the building blocks, is you go to the Insert tab, click on Quick Parts, and then here is your Building Blocks Organizer. So these are all of our building blocks. If I can zoom in and have this make sense. Okay, you can sort by whatever you want to sort by, by name, by gallery, by category. Here you can see uh, the three building blocks that I just created. Okay, the policy footer, the policy title, and then that little one I made is a disclaimer. If you click on this, you can kind of see what the contents are over here. But like I said, you can't change those. All you can do from here is edit the properties, which are the name, the gallery, the category, add a description if you need to, or change one of these second ones, or, or these last ones. Other than that, all you can do is delete or insert. Um, you know, if I wanted to insert uh, this disclaimer quick part, wherever my insertion line is, I don't want to do it because my insertion line is, is in my footer, um, but you can insert from here. If I decide I don't need this disclaimer quick part anymore, I can delete it. It'll ask you if you're sure you want to delete that building block. Yes, if you're sure. No, if you think you might want to keep it. So how do we make changes to our building blocks? Well, let's say I wanted to change this to training and technology SOP. Instead of standard operating procedure, I wanted to say that. Well, here's how you make the change. You make the change. I lost my, my date. Where'd my date go? I'll just go in here and make a new date. Um, if I could spell February 2021. Then you select the new content for the building block had to <laughs> had to find the right word there select the content for the for the the updated building block not the new building block but the updated building block and then here's the tricky part you have to save this under the exact same name as the first one so this was a footer so i'm going to go to footers there's what i called it policy footer no, I didn't save this one. But if I wanted to make this the policy footer, then I simply click on Save Selection, and I call it Policy Policy Footer. Now let me let me make this make sense. Training technology.
policy number there I updated made a little bit of change to it um, so I select the content the new content I'm going to go to footer again you have to remember the name or have to know the name so policy footer save selection to footer gallery policy footer I will save it under my footer category if you don't save it under the same category then it's not going to replace the old one it's going to make a second one in a new category so the name has to be the same the category has to be the same click OK well and of course the gallery has to be the same when I click OK it comes up and say is do you want to redefine the building block entry yes this is my new building block so new new document uh, if I go to insert footer policy footer there's my new policy footer so yeah one one minor downfall one itty bitty downfall you have to make the changes and then resave the building block um, to update it okay now just to show you that that you can do this with more than just text let me create a little more intricate header for you for this one I'll start by adding a shape I'll put a rounded rectangle up here okay because it does work with more than just text in that rounded rectangle I'll type well, you know just whatever my personal header and then I will um, this isn't centered I'm, uh, word makes it look like text inside your um, shapes is centered but it's not really if I backspace then then it moves back to the beginning if I want it truly centered then I come over to my tabs button okay this is our tabs button I don't know how much you've worked with tabs in the past but this is your tab selector button this indicates a left align tab I want a center align tab so I click this button until I get that upside down T that's my center align tab and I'm going to come over here I'm going to put that center align right here on this it's like 3.3.23 point it's hard to get it right on the line but that's close enough and then I'll press tab and there you'll see now I am truly centered on my heading now I want a right align tab so I'll keep clicking this until I get a backwards L it's actually the very next one and then I'm going to come over to my ruler and it's it's really hard to place a tab right here on this margin marker so you come just a little bit to the left of that you click to add your your right align tab and then I'm going to drag it over on top of that margin indicator then I'll go to the end of my text press tab and I'll put page and then I don't know a little squiggly something and then shift alt P to add the page number easy schmeasy now I'm going to select all of this I'll make it bigger um, maybe I'll add some effects I'll give it a, a, a glow glow is always fun there's a glow okay and now I'm going to add a graphic image I'm going to go to the insert tab on my ribbon and I'm going to insert a picture I'm going to come down here and I'm going to find my CTC Eagle logo and I insert that by double clicking now you'll notice that it won't let you move this around you can't really do much for for adjusting it within within that heading that we added um, without having it affect your text 
So what we need to do is we need to change the layout options on this. And we do that by clicking and dragging and moving it outside of that rounded rectangle. Now we have our layout options right here, this little button. And we're going to add this in front of text. So now it's in front of the text. I can move it wherever I want it. I can resize it a little bit if I need to without affecting anything else. So now I have this beautiful header. I've got a graphic image attached to it. To make this a building block, I select all of it. Okay, I did that by coming over here into what they call the gutter. It's the, the left margin. And when mouse pointer changes to that up and right pointing arrow, I click and that selects everything to the right of it. Now I'm gonna to go to the insert tab and this is a header. So I'm gonna save this in the header gallery. I'll name it my personal header. I'm gonna create a new category called, yep, underscore my, my headers. Click OK, click OK again. And again, I'll go to a new document just so you don't think I got something up my sleeve. I'll go to the insert tab. I'll go to header. There's my header. Click and there's the header with all the fancy stuff I added to the fonts and my graphic image attached all in one piece. So again, yeah, it takes a little time maybe to create the building blocks, but to reuse them again, holy cow, is it fast, way quicker then say, let's say you created a template that had all of this stuff in it. Well, you can just open your template or open that document and then copy and paste and copy and paste and copy and paste. You're still going back and forth and back and forth. Even if you've got a dual monitor system, you're going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Creating building blocks is way quicker than copying and pasting or retyping and, and doing everything from scratch. All right, so I got about 15 minutes left here. Um, geez, you know, I, I have no idea if anybody's been, um, texting me at all or, or, or sending me chat messages. I don't see anything over here. So I'm gonna assume nobody's trying to chat me up. Um, so let's take a look at one more thing. I'm gonna show you how to create a watermark, add that to the watermark gallery, and then we'll, we'll wrap this up. Um, if anybody has any questions, you can throw them up on, on chat starting now. And uh, when I get to the end, I'll take a look, and if there's any questions on there, I'll be more than glad to answer them for you. Um, let me see here. I just sent out a chat. We'll see if anybody gets it. Uh, okay, a watermark. Um, a watermark is simply something that shows up in the background of a document. Um, you know, like if it's a, a sample document. Well, let's let's take a look. Um, design, watermarks. Um, there we go. Confidential, do not copy, draft, sample, that kind of stuff. Okay. These will show up behind text. If you've never worked with watermarks, let me just throw some stuff in here. Um, and I'll insert a watermark. We'll say draft. There you go. You see it shows up in the background. It does print, okay? It does print. And it's actually part of the header footer group or header footer gallery type of thing. So it, it goes behind your actual text. Uh, you, can't, you can't just click on this draft to make a change to it or to select it. But if you double click in the header area, now you can click on it um, and, and move it around, whatever it is you need to do. Because it's in that same area, it's in the background, okay? All right, so um, let's create a watermark just in case you ever need to create a watermark, I don't know. If you ever would, but it's fun to do. It's a new experience, probably something that you've never done before. All right, so the watermark, um, real easy. I'm gonna start by inserting 
some word art just because this is predefined, pre-formatted. Uh, I'm going to go with this 25% gray. I'll type in whatever I wanted to to say. Sample. Do not print. Okay. I'll make this bigger. Hopefully you know how to do this. If not, watch. I just click and drag. Um, I'm going to select all my text. I'm going to do a control A to select the text. And then keyboard shortcut, making it bigger. Um, control and the right square bracket. I'll make it just as big as it'll go and still fit in there. So there we go. And that's as big as it goes. Now this is, <laughs> this is important. Um, I, I practiced this multiple times before I got to this point, just because I wanted to make sure I didn't overlook this. Once you get to this point, you have to change your layout options because right now it's set to um, go around your text. We want it to go, or it's set to go in front of your text. We want it to go behind the text, okay? We don't want it in front of the text because then it'll be on top of whatever's on your document. We want it behind the text. Okay, so make sure you change the layout options, set it to behind text, and then you can close that option window. Now I'm going to skew this a little bit. I'm going to rotate it using that rotate handle. I'm going to have Word center this text for me using the position button on the layout tab. Position, I want it centered in the middle. Okay, so that way there's my whole page. It's centered horizontally and middle vertically. Now with, with this, it's a text box actually. With this text box selected, I'm going to go to the design tab. I'm going to click the watermark button and down at the bottom you'll see save selection to watermark gallery. Click. I'll call it sample one because there's already a sample out there. I don't want to overwrite that one. Leave it in the watermarks gallery and I'll create a new category. My watermarks. Click OK. Click OK again. And then I will delete that. I'll add some random text. And then I will insert my new watermark. Oh, looky there. It did it to me again. This is what it did to me once when I was when I was testing this out. Even though I changed the format, the layout format, it switched it back. So I'm going to come back here. See, it, it, it switched it to square. I'll put it back to behind text. And then I will go to the design tab, select the watermark. It's going to be sample one, sample one, my categories. Click OK, yep, replace it. Okay, so now let's open a new document, throw some text in. And let's see if we got the watermark working this time. Design, watermark, there it goes, okay. So there you go, there's how you do watermarks. Uh, save it as a watermark in the watermark gallery. Now, here's something else that you might find handy. These building blocks aren't just limited to Microsoft Word. I don't know how much y'all use Publisher, but Microsoft Publisher has some building blocks. I'm not going to go in and, and show you all the building blocks in Publisher. 
But even more important than that, I think all of us use email a lot. In email, if you go to a new, a new document, a new message, and you drop down into the message window, click the insert tab and you'll see quick parts. Now, another unfortunate part of this is quick parts building blocks don't go from application to application. Building blocks created in Word can only be used in Word. Building blocks created in Publisher can only be used in Publisher. Building blocks created in Outlook can only be used in Outlook. So it, it works the same way. If you have some random text, and again, I'm just gonna grab some random text from from one of these, and I'll insert it into my document. Maybe I'll even add a, a, a greeting. Uh, you know, I, I do name here because that's a misspelled word, and Outlook will always stop you after you click send and say, hey, you got a misspelled word, do you wanna fix it? So that way I know I'll be able to put the person's name in there I'm sending this to. I select the text that I want to use over and over and over again, right? Because this is a building block. I go to Quick Parts, and then I click on Save Selection to Quick Parts Gallery, and I'll call this Disclaimer. I'm gonna create a new category called My Disclaimers. Click OK, click OK again. I'll delete this, and then if I go to Quick Parts, there's my disclaimer. Click, and there it is. Um, I know Sharon works for me. She uses Quick Parts all the time, uh, and you'll notice I have some other ones in here. Um, you know, just frequently sent email messages, and then you just change certain key parts, whether it's the name or a date or a department or whatever the case may be. Super, super easy to use. Super, super time-saving, okay? Um, time's about up. Good thing, because I'm pretty much done. So I'll, I'll come back in picture, hang out with the ducks and my truck. <laughs> so anybody have any questions? All right, I'll take that as a no. Um, if you do have questions, feel free to give me a call, 254-526-1381. I'll be more than glad to help you out. Um, you, can, you can always go to the HR webpage or the employee training webpage. Click on our new live chat button. Chat with me or Sharon live. We'll be glad to help you out with that. anything that, that uh, goes along with this. Um, if Sharon can't help you, she'll refer you to me. Uh, shoot me an email. Whatever you need to do. I'm, I'm, I'm here most of the time. <laughs> All right. Well, y'all have a great day. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay happy. And we'll talk to you later.